Hello everyone out there on the internet. I'm Pastor Christian McMullen. I'm the interim pastor here at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Obelisk, Pennsylvania. It is a pleasure that you are tuning in to this online worship service. Uh, welcome. Before we continue with the service, I have a few brief announcements. Uh, the first is uh, this upcoming Sunday, January the 30th, uh, will be the congregation's annual meeting. It is going to be on Zoom only. So yes, just like y'all had it a year ago on Zoom, you'll be having it again on Zoom. Uh, the church council decided because of the huge increase in COVID cases in the last month, uh, we'd, it'd just be safer to do Zoom. So that's a 12 o'clock Zoom only annual meeting on the 30th. Uh, annual report will go out electronically along with the Zoom link. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, if you are a member and you're watching this, but you're not getting our emails, please call the church office and we'll get you set up for that. Uh, Sunday school is happening in between the two worship services, worship at eight, Sunday school at nine, worship again at 1015. Uh, the Zoom Bible study is also going on on Thursday at seven. Uh, tune into that also as well. Uh, again, if, if you're interested, call the church office and we'll make sure you're on the email list to get that Zoom link as well. Uh, big news on the transition front. Uh, you may have heard that the church council completed the ministry site profile and it has been sent to the bishop's office for review. Yay! Uh, that means that the next step is the Committee of Deans will start to put together a slate of candidates uh, that will then, uh, the, your paperwork will be shared with the candidates. The candidates will read through the ministry site profile, which is like a 14 page resume of the church, okay? Everything y'all did over the course of the last year in terms of transition events and, and congregational meetings and the survey and that kind of thing all went into that profile. The candidates will look at the profile, decide if they want to continue an interview or not. At that point, the call committee uh, kicks in, and yay, y'all have a call committee. Uh, the members of the call committee are Jerry Jordan, the chairperson, uh, Gabriel Love, Nicole Greer, Gwen Simmons, Craig Brenlinger, Eve Geringer, and Jane Van Buskirk. Uh, they will be installed formally in a worship service uh, sometime to be determined in the near future. Uh, but pre please pray for them um, and pray for the process. Pray for your future pastor. So big news there. 
That is all I have for announcements at this time. Let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Nehemiah 8, 1 through 3, 5 through 6, 8 through 10. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday. In the presence of the men and the women who those who could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For, these, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Here ends the reading. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the ends of it, 
again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Here in Psalm. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to be the hand, I have no need of, need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indis or indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no <coughs> dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. All are apostles? Are, are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? What strive for the greater gifts? Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 4. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. 
He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. So the readings for, for this Sunday, for, uh, they're, they're fantastic. All of them are great. They tie in really well with each other. Uh, it was actually kind of hard to figure out how to kind of, I don't know, narrow it down. Um, could have preached on Nehemiah or the Psalm. Uh, but I'm going to focus on 1 Corinthians 12 and relate it to the gospel. A year ago, when I started here back in February, um, the, my first Sunday was the first Sunday in February. Lent started pretty much right after that. We did a midweek Lent Bible study series that looked at this text from 1 Corinthians 12. And then over the course of the five weeks of Lent, we looked at uh, chapter 12 for two weeks and then uh, Ephesians 4 and Romans 12. Those others also use the image of the church as the body of Christ. The purpose a year ago was to get y'all to reconnect and to remember what God did to connect you to him and to each other in this place. That word remember, it's like imagine you chop off a member of your body. Well, to remember it is to remember it, to put it back together, right? Um, and that's just one little weird way of trying to tie that word in uh, with, with the image. Um, that's what it was about, to, to remember what God did to connect you to him and to each other in this place. Uh, and now, a year later, this text comes up again. This time paired with Jesus' uh, kind of like inaugural sermon. It's the first sermon of Jesus' recorded in Luke's Gospel. The Holy Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us to bring good news to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. We, as the body of Christ, as in 1 Corinthians 12, we, as the body of Christ, have within us the Spirit of Christ. We have been anointed with the Spirit of the Lord, just as Jesus was, and Jesus has anointed us as His body with that same Spirit. So, what do we do with the gifts of the Holy Spirit? What is our mission as the body of Christ? Well, it's the exact same thing Jesus did with the Holy Spirit within him. And you want to talk about timely. A year later, a year later, the transition work is done. Y'all will be interviewing candidates before you know it. The call committee has been appointed, all of which means more change is afoot. How do we stay focused on what our mission is? I have asked you all that a lot in the last year. The whole purpose of the transition work that we've done over the last year is really to, to, to focus in on that question. What's our mission? Where are we going? And so what do these texts say to us today that's relevant? How is it kind of bringing it full circle? A year ago, it was about reconnecting with each other because it was the pandemic, right? Uh, vaccines weren't fully available yet. It was the, still getting over the winter surge from last year. Um, not a whole lot's changed. We still need to kind of reconnect, right? Um, community, connection. 
Paul talks about how if one part of the body hurts, we all hurt. Uh, if one part of the body rejoices, we all rejoice. All have a part to play. We can't exclude others. Connection. We can't overestimate the importance of this for the health of a congregation. And even as our health as individuals, people who are disconnected from others and lonely have statistically poorer health than those who have friends in a support network. Connection. Uh, you can't overestimate the importance of that for the health of a congregation. Of course. And if there's one thing the pandemic has done, is it's ruined how we normally connect with people. Hopefully, it's also forced us to adapt new ways to connect with other people, to connect with each other. You know, Facebook, Zoom, that kind of thing. But this lack of connection, or this loss of connection, it's why masks and quarantines are so divisive. At some point, the stakes get high with the disconnection. Uh, CHOP, Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, just a couple weeks ago, recently said that disrupting education, especially for little kids, is more harmful than the risks of getting COVID. Now, would they have said that eight months ago? Probably not. But I know from seeing my own teenagers and talking to other parents and other mental health professionals that COVID has done a huge number on teen mental health. Connection. We are created to be in connection with people. And this metaphor of body parts is stating the obvious. But when we live in a society in which there's a lot of shame, a lot of ways that people look down on others, judge others, divisiveness, it's not hard to imagine the hand saying to the eye, I have no need of you. When we put ourselves in a particular camp or we put down other people in other camps and we say that other people aren't allowed in our camp, then we're saying, I have no need of you. And then everyone becomes an I or some other favored body part. That's not what Paul is describing. The health of this body is dependent on y'all's connection to each other and to Christ who is the head. The pastor is not the head of the church, by the way. Christ is. The health of this body is dependent on your connection to each other and your connection to Christ who guides and directs how you connect to the rest of the body and how you live out his mission. Connection. Next week's the annual meeting. The Church Council completed the MSP on January 9th. The call committee has been appointed. will be installed soon. All parts of the body play a role. How y'all have gotten through the transition process has been all about connection. Um, I hope y'all have noticed that throughout the course of the last year. Uh, I could have asked the transition team as a committee to fill out the MSP. And they could have done their work, you know, isolated in a room, you know, filling out the MSP. But that doesn't foster connection. It doesn't try to hear the gifts, the ideas, the thoughts, and contributions of as many people as possible. That, and and uh, the point is to get the big questions out there for y'all to think about. How you do the work is as important or more important than anything else. And my hope and prayer is that that will bear fruit. Create opportunities for conversation or at least have conversation partners. You hear someone's thoughts and opinions and you think about it. And maybe talk about it with others. That has happened in the course of this transition. I can't tell you how many times someone has said to me, yeah, you know, that thing that so-and-so said at the Heritage event, you know, that was kind of interesting. Or, you know, when we sat down and talked about St. Luke's future, so-and-so said such-and-such. I've been thinking about that. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose. It's how we connect with other people. And when we connect with other people, we grow, we learn. 
We adapt. That's what we've had to do in the last year, and adapt. And the only way to do that is to learn new things. And we learn new things by talking with other people and staying connected. Meanwhile, the mission doesn't really change. If we are Christ's body in the world, then we are created and called to do what He did. Luke 4. If we have His Holy Spirit within us, and we do, all right, that was uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Paul is saying, I don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the gifts of the Spirit. There's one Spirit, one Lord, one God of all, one service. Then what Paul, Paul is saying, and what Jesus says of Himself, He can say of us. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you to do what Jesus did. The Spirit makes us prophets, evangelists, healers, liberators. We become those things. We become prophets and evangelists and healers and liberators when we live the mission of the church here at St. Luke's. Again, I talked a lot about mission and vision and purpose throughout the course of the transition. And I bet with a little faith-based faith -based imagination, it wouldn't be hard, it wouldn't be hard to see how what y'all do is prophetic and evangelism and healing and liberating. Um, use your imagination and think about how all that works. And how we are able to do these things is through Christ's Spirit. Our lives and the church's ministry has been tremendously disrupted. We have to adapt. And we do that by staying focused on our mission and purpose and then get creative with each other. <clears throat> we talk about ideas. We help each other stay focused. Because if we didn't help each other, we would cave in to the easy message that tells us to retreat into our comfort zones. Jesus doesn't invite us into a relationship with Him in order for us to stay in our comfort zones. He invites us into a relationship with Him in order to comfort us when we get kicked out of our comfort zones. And that, that's life. That's, that's, that's liberating. Jesus goes on with His sermon, by the way. Spoiler alert. Next Sunday's text. He goes on with His text. And He intentionally ag antagonizes the people in His hometown by lifting up examples of how God's will included outsiders and despised outsiders at that. And there's some foreshadowing there of the cross. The crowd gets angry and they want to kill him. His mission will come with a cost. There will be resistance. Now we could focus on the resistance, the cross, and back away because of fear or discomfort. But then we forget, and this is when we need to remember, we need to remember what his mission is. Sight to the blind. Good news. For the poor, brokenhearted, downtrodden, comfort, strength for the weary, justice for those who are captive to injustice, who suffer from a society that's unjust, liberation. I think we all want those things. At least Jesus' inauguration speech, this being the first sermon of His public ministry, He's laying out the agenda for the kingdom of God. And His vision draws in our faith, calling us, inviting us to His future. And His Spirit makes it all possible. The gifts of His Spirit are within us. We are connected to each other within this body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. O oh God, you reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. Give us courage and faith, O oh God, to trust your promises and for your spirit to bear fruit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you desire that there be no dissension among us, where we are divided in our society, nation, or world. Come quickly to reunite us into one body. Open our eyes to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. Help us to have empathy and to debate civilly. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression. We pray for all of those, O God, who are bound and are struggling. We pray especially for all those on our prayer list and the ones we name before you now, whether silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this congregation. We ask and pray, O oh God, that you give us a sense of accomplishment and gratefulness, gratitude, for all the ways in which you have worked in us in this past year. We ask and pray that you bless our upcoming annual meeting and bless the call committee as a call process begins. We also pray that you would empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, but also with you. Uh, I invite you on the internet to share a sign of peace with someone, uh, send them a text, make a phone call, uh, write a note, uh, any way to sort of take uh, the, the positive message of God's good news for you, share it with others. That's sharing God's peace. Before we pray the offering prayer, I also want to thank all of you out there uh, who have supported St. Luke's Ministries in, this, in these unusual times. Um, I am grateful to you, and I know it has made a difference in the ministry of the church. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us, O God, and nourish us with your word. And prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go in peace and share God's spirit. Thanks be to God.